Okay. All right. Um, all right. I think we're recording now. So yesterday, what we did is we talked about functions, and I showed you how you can convert code from C to MIPS, in which a function like main would call another function. And even I showed you at the end of the video what we would do if that function is calling another function. Because if that function is calling another function, then there is something we need to do uh, regarding the return address register. So let me, I think what we can do, we can start with an example and then we can talk about the new stuff. So how about we say void main, and here I'm gonna say int n equals to 10, int m equals to 20. Um, let's say var one here, and say var two. And let's say, for example, first function, and maybe I can say var three, int var three, equals to var one plus var two. And then let me do first function. And for now, everything will be void. So those functions will not return anything. But today we're gonna to talk about actually that, how we can write code when RC, how we can translate the code when we have a function that returns a number or returns a value. So here I'm gonna say int, you know, v1 equals to something, say 100, int v2 equals to 200. And then I'm gonna say second function. And then I'm gonna say, you know, maybe int v3 equals to v1 plus v1, which is really v1, let's say v1 multiplied by four. And then we're gonna have void second function. And let's say the second function is gonna say int m1 equals to 200 int. So this function, by the way, can of course contain arrays. Every single function, every single one of those can contain arrays. That's perfectly fine. And that's maybe what I should do. So let me say int array equals to one, two, three, just as an example. Um, okay, so now, so if you remember from yesterday, I did say that we have to convert one function at a time. So if you wanna convert this function to MIPS, then you don't need to see the other functions. There is really no need for you to see them. Same goes for this one and same goes for this one. All right, so which one do you wanna start with? Give me, give me one of them. Should we start with main? first function or second function? It's really not gonna matter, of course, but which one do you wanna start with? Main, okay, main is not bad, we can start with main. So the question that I have for you here, for var one, should we use a T register or an S register? And does it even matter? So I'm gonna start typing, I'm gonna say main. And then I'm going to wait for you to answer my question. Should we use a T or S for var one? And does it even matter? Okay, so Grace is saying it doesn't really matter. Do you agree with her, Katie? Okay, so Kate is saying it has to be an S register. And that's actually correct. The reason why this is the case is because if we use a T register for this and a T register for this, when we call this function, this function might change the Ts. We don't want to forget that. And this is a problem because on this line, I'm using var1 and var2. And I'm expecting, of course, that these two will not change because I'd like var3 to be 30. I mean, that's when you look at this code in C, 
Of course, you expect var3 to be 30. In this case, we cannot use a T register. Otherwise, first function might change them and then kind of we're in trouble. So, okay, that's good. So let's do that. I'm going to say add immediate. I'm going to do the easy part S0, 0, 0, 10. So I'm going to use S0 and S1. Of course, they don't have to be a 0, S1, but they have to be an S register. It could be S2, S5. It makes sense for us to start with S0 and S1. And here, if you remember, when you call a function, this one would be translated to jump and link. So jump and link first function. And then um, I need to translate this line and that's actually simple. I can just say add S3 or S2, um, uh, S0, S1. So this is simply adding S0 to S1 and putting it in S2. Um, okay, now uh, you don't want to forget that main always starts at the beginning, at the top. So even if in the C code we have second function starting at the beginning, when you write code in MIPS, you always want to start with the main. And what goes after main is not really that important. Kind of the order doesn't is not that important. So whether you take first function or second function after main, it's not going to matter but you wanna start with main. And of course, another thing to keep in mind is we don't wanna forget. So I'm gonna put first function here and I'm gonna put second function here. And you don't wanna forget that at the end of main, you wanna quit the program. So you wanna put 10 in V0, add immediate V0, 0, 0, 10. If you don't remember this, you probably should rewatch what we did yesterday, and then we do the syscall. So syscall is gonna transfer the control to the operating system. The operating system is gonna look at the value of V0, and it's gonna see 10, and because of that, it's gonna quit or exit the program. So 10 is the code for syscall or for the operating system to quit or exit the program. So we need to do that because if we don't do this, we're going to continue going sequentially and that's kind of problematic. We don't want to call first function after main. We want to call first function when we have jump and link, not after we're done with main. Okay, so this is good. Do you have any questions about this? Okay. So now what do you want to do? First function or second function? Again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, first function. That's, that's fair because we have first function here. Let's do first function. So now, of course, I have a question for you and you probably are expecting the question. And the question is, Okay, the question is for V1, let me call it, V1 is fine. Uh, I don't want to use V1 because we have actually a register with the name V1 and I don't want us to get confused. So let's call it num1, num1 and num2. And here num1 multiplied by four, we put it in num3. Okay. <clears throat> so my question to you is, which register should we use for num1? We have two options, T and S. I mean, we, we have one of the T's or one of the S's. Which one should we use? Okay, so Grace, you're saying S. Can you tell me why S? Why S instead of T? Is there a reason? Because of the call second function, because there's a function call, but we still need num1 to remain the same after. That's good. So this is great. So the reason is actually twofold, or rather it's really two reasons combined. One of them is we have a function call here, and the other one is we're using num1 
after the function call. Um, so because of that, we need to use you know an S register. We can use S0. Now, for us to use S0, we have to preserve the old or original value of S0. We discussed that yesterday. So we have to allocate space on the stack, add immediate SP, SP negative four. That's going to move the, the stack pointer by four bytes. And then I can simply say store word S0, zero for the immediate and SP for the register. And right now, when these two commands execute, the value of S0 is going to be on the stack. And right now I can say add immediate S00100. And that's going to be for num1. How about num2? Which register should we use for num2? S or T? T, that's good. That's great. So we would use a T. And the reason why we would want to use a T is because we don't want to have to kind of preserve an, another S register because we don't need to. The reason why we don't need to is because num2 is not being used after the function call. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say 200. And here, of course, I can do jump and link to second function. Now, as soon as I do that, uh, I made a mistake. There's a mistake here that's been made. Do you remember what the mistake is? Something that we covered at the very end of yesterday's video. Okay, so, okay, all right, so that's okay. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep it like this, and then I'm gonna show you where the mistake is. But let's continue. Um, let's do this one. Who wants to do this one? This one is multiplying num one by four. That can be done by shift lift logical and putting the result in maybe a T register because, you know, as you can see here, we don't have another function and we're not using num3 after that function. So after this line, we don't have anything really in this in this scope, so we can use t1. So I'm gonna say shift lift logical, and I'm gonna put the result in t1, and I'm gonna shift num1, which is s0, and I'm gonna shift it by two positions, and that's gonna multiply it by four. And then of course, if that's it, you wanna do jump register r, a, you don't you don't want to forget that and of course before that you want to free up the space on the stack and of course you want to load the original or the the uh, the initial value of s0 so you want to load w s0 0 for the immediate sp for the stack and here you can say add immediate sp sp4 so we do need to do that now, the problem with this code, so this code is almost correct, almost perfect, but there's a mistake. And the mistake is with the RA when you do this. So again, let me remind you what happens when you do jump and link. When you do jump and link, there's a linking and then there is jumping. Linking is where we would put the address of this instruction, which is really the instruction right after the jump and link in RA. So as soon as this instruction executes, the value of RA is going to be the address of this instruction. The reason why we do this is because we need second function, which is here, to be able to jump back to the, play, to the right place, which is right after the function call. If we don't put the address of this one in a register, then second function is not going to know where to jump back to. So jump and link is going to put the address of this instruction in RA, and then it's going to jump to second function. And at some point, second function is going to say jump register RA, and it's going to go back to this highlighted line. We're going to execute it. We're going to execute this one, execute this one. And when we get to here, we have a problem. And the problem is when you say jump register RA, what is the value of RA? Well, the value of RA is the address of this one. So instead of jumping back to the main, which is here, 
we're jumping back to here. And that would create this infinite loop. So this is something that we covered at the end of yesterday's video. So you might want to rewatch that part. Excuse me. Do you have any questions about that? The solution, of course, let me show you the solution. And then, then I'll ask you if you have any questions. The solution is before we make this jump, we want to make sure that the value of RA, which this jump register needs, essentially, it's really the value of RA at the beginning of this function. Because when we call this first function from here, and when we get to the first line here, the value of RA is the value that this function needs to jump back again to main, to the caller, in this case, main. So a good place to actually put RA on the stack is at the beginning of the function. So what you would do is, if you have a function that calls another function, then it would be smart to, at the beginning of the function, put the return address value on the stack. That just would be smart because you know you're going to have to do that. You can do it at the beginning and that'll just, so that you don't forget. So here, instead of allocating four, I'm going to allocate eight. And I'm going to uh, put a zero first. So that's going to put a zero first. And then I'm going to say store word RA. And I'm, I'm going to have an offset of four and then SP. So those three lines will allocate space and they're going to put S0 and RA on the stack. And the idea here is before you jump register RA, you want to bring the correct, the value that you need, the correct value of RA or the value that you need really of RA from the stack. Just like you want to load S0, you want to load RA. So you can say load W RA and you use the same offset, which is four, and that's SP. And then of course you wanna free up the space by adding eight bytes because that's how much we allocated. And that's it, and that would be correct. Let me make the font a tad smaller. All right. Uh, I think I can do this. Okay, do you have any questions about this? Okay, that's good. So for the second function, it's really, this one is rather easy actually, because we know how to translate arrays to MIPS. Um, you don't want to forget jump register RA. So all of those functions will have jump register RA. So it's good to just add it at the beginning. And here what we need to do is because this is a local array and because you're assigning the values kind of at the beginning, what you should do is you should allocate the space by moving the stack pointer and then assigning those three values to the stack by using store word. So it's really not that complicated. You can say add immediate SP, SP, negative 12. And then um, you can say, you know, store word, and you want to put the value one in T0, maybe add immediate T0, 0, 1. And then you can say store word T0. And here you can say 0 SP. And then, you know, add immediate T002 and store word T04 SP. And then add immediate T003. And you can say store word T08 SP. Now, of course, you're not going to see code and see that looks like this because this is not doing anything. And I'm going to tell you a secret, but when you translate this to MIPS in the, in the exam or in the quiz, you don't want to use that kind of piece of information. The secret is the compiler is very smart. And when it sees that you're doing some 
kind of code if you when it sees that you're writing some code that really doesn't do anything you know what the compiler is going to do it's going to say i don't want to even translate that to mips because clearly you don't know what you're doing and there's no point in doing that i mean this array is not doing anything so what the compiler might say not every single time it might say this one i'm going to translate it to nothing because it does nothing i mean I know it allocates an array, allocates space for an array, and it puts values, but because they're not using it, I'm not gonna do all of that and spend the time, you know, to allocate space and put values in the RAM. Now, of course, this optimization is not something that you're gonna be doing in the exam or the quiz. In the exam or in the quizzes, you're gonna just translate what you're seeing. But the compiler, like I said, it's actually smart. The compiler is very smart and it has tricks. So one of those tricks would be to kind of ignore some of the code because it doesn't do anything. Um, the goal of the compiler is to write efficient code. So it, it the, the goal is to make, you know, this final product run fast. And if that means, again, omitting some code because, because it doesn't do anything, then that then be it, it's fine. Um, all right so after we do this of course we're going to free up the space again this is really not doing anything like i said but because i've written it in c you want to write it in uh, in MIPS. so here i'm going to just say add immediate sp sp12 so that's going to free up the space. Now, I wasn't going to uh, do that, but I think I will. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Keynote. And uh, I'm going to actually show you kind of how the stack pointer moves in the in the RAM. I wasn't going to do that because I was thinking, you know, we've done enough of this. But I do want to do it because here we have two functions that are moving the stack pointer. And I want to show you what that means. I mean, how that looks like uh, on the stack. It doesn't look kind of any different than what you would expect, but I think just to make sure that we all um, understand it, I would like for us to do this. And then what we can do after that, we can just stop the recording and um, start a new one. And we can talk about uh, the return returning something, functions that return something. Okay, let's let me do this. Um, now this is too small, so I'm gonna do some of this. Okay. And let me remove that. Let me unmerge. And let me make the color the same. Okay. So all right. Are you ready to convert to see how it looks like on the stack? Give me a reaction because this one's gonna be. I need you to be ready. Okay. All right. Let's do it together. So let's see how the we're gonna we're gonna execute the code just like how you know the CPU is gonna execute the code because of course at the beginning the stack pointer is gonna be here. And as we execute code, the stack pointer is gonna be moving, you know, down and up. Okay, so we do this line, of course, we don't change the stack. We do this line and then we jump and link to first function. 
And you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to give those inst uh, instructions addresses. Let's give this one 100. I'm just going to start with 100, 104. The reason, of course, why I'm going uh, in fours is because, as you would probably expect, each instruction is going to take four bytes. So if this one is going to be at address 100, that means this instruction is going to be consuming or using the address 100, 101, 102, and 103. It will be using four bytes, and that's why this one has to live at address 104. So this is 120. And notice here that I'm skipping the labels because the labels actually do not have do not consume space. The labels actually will be gone when this becomes machine code. We don't have to talk about that. It's a minor detail. Um, let's make sure that we're not gonna make a mistake here. So please correct me here if I make a mistake. Hopefully I'm not gonna make a mistake. But as I mentioned before, it's actually easy to make mistakes. It's easy for anyone to make mistakes. So that's why we need you to correct me. One eighty, I think. All right, so one eighty four. 188, 192, 196, and 200. Wow, that's perfect. That's, that's great. That's from 100 to 200. Did we get this right? Are we, do we want to take a look at it? I'm going to take another look at it really quickly. You do the same. Make sure that we got everything right. Looks good so far. So far, so good. Okay, I think it's good. I think it looks good. Okay. All right, so first we're going to start here. And of course, we're not going to use the stack pointer or the stack. And then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to move to this one. And this one's going to take me here. And now I'm going to move the stack pointer by it. So this means this stack pointer is going to go is going to go to here. And again, if I make a mistake also in any of the things that I am doing here, again, hopefully I'm not going to make any mistakes, but if you notice something or if you have a question, please uh, ask it. So this one's going to move the stack pointer by it. And then I'm going to put the value of a zero here. Now I'm going to actually merge, I'm going to say, kind of old value of a zero, which is 10. That's okay, I'm gonna give it that, that number as well. And then I'm gonna have an offset of four and I'm gonna put the old value of RA and I'm gonna actually merge, I'm gonna say old value of RA, which is, can someone tell me what the old value of RA? I'll give you a few seconds to think about this. What is the what is the value of RA here at this point? Okay, Grace, perfect. It's 112. That's what it is because when you jump and link, you put this address in RA. So which is 112. Okay. So I'm going to do something else here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the stack to indicate which function is using the, the space. So I'm going to say yellow is for, actually, do we have, do we even have a yellow? Let me see. Okay, that's more like an orange. So orange is for first function.
I'm just gonna do that just for us. It's really um, the com the compiler or the the CPU doesn't really need to make those distinctions. Um, so because of that, um, we're, we're yeah. So because of that, it doesn't really matter. But for us, just to make sure that we're understanding what's happening, I'm gonna make that distinction. Okay. So I did this. I did this. And right now I'm going to put 100 in as zero. So that happens in the CPU. Nothing happens in the RAM. And then I'm going to put 200 in T0. That's the CPU thing. And then I'm going to jump and link to second function. So that's that means I'm going to get to here. And now I'm going to allocate 12 bytes. So the stack pointer is going to move to here. Did you see what's happening? The stack pointer used to be here. Right now it's moving to here. And that's okay. And then I'm going to put one, so in T0, and then one on the stack pointer. So I'm going to put one here. So this one's going to put one in T0, and this one's going to take this one and put it where the stack pointer is pointing at, which is here. And then I'm going to put two in T0, and I'm going to use offset of four, and I'm going to put T here, T2 here, T0 here, which is two. I think I need to slow down here. I don't want to uh, confuse you. Yeah, so let me do that. I think slow is better. And then here, I'm going to put 3 in T0, and I'm going to take this value of T0 and put it at the location of where the pointer of SP is or pointing at plus 8, which is the offset. So that would be here. And I'm going to put 3 here. So green is for second function. So this space, again, this, this distinction is only for us. This space is has been is been is being used by second function. Um, okay. And then what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna free the space. So this stack pointer is gonna go back to here. So notice something here. At the beginning of second function, the stack pointer was here. And at the end of the second function, the stack pointer is here. So during the life cycle of a function, the stack pointer is going to be moving down. And then at the end, it's going to go up. So for this first function, it doesn't really know. I mean, it doesn't really know and it doesn't really care. If the, sunk, if the second function is gonna, move, is gonna move the stack pointer, as long as it returns it where it used to be. The reason why the second function, or rather the first function, kind of this code, needs the second function to return the stack pointer to where it used to be is because this, this, this first function is gonna use the stack pointer to load stuff. So if, if this second function moves the stack pointer and puts it here, and then it doesn't return it back to where it used to be, then when we try to load S0 and RA, which are, which are these two, we're not going to be able to do that because the stack pointer is not where we expect it to be, which is here. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Okay, so there's a question. That's good. Um, Okay, so the question is, Grace is asking, let's say we wrote the code exactly as it is written right now, except that we forgot line 196, which is this one. Uh, would that mean that when we jump back to the first function, we would use one and two instead of is you and, and is and R? Right. That's correct. So what uh, Grace is saying, what if by mistake, it's a mistake. What if by mistake we forget to do this? Well, if you forget to do this, I'm gonna strike it for a second. If you forget to do this, then the stack pointer is gonna be here. And when we load, you know, what's, what's at the stack pointer into a zero 
and then we use an offset of four and load that and put it in RA, of course, that's a problem. That's going to be, it's going to be a catastrophe because when we jump RA, we're going to go somewhere else because RA is going to contain the value two. So of course, again, that's a mistake and something like a compiler um, will uh, will not do it. A compiler will never do this mistake. Um, but if you write code in MIPS, um, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's gonna, it's, the code will, will crash. Um, and maybe, of course, the simul, this is simul, simul, right now we're speaking about the simulator but even if this wasn't in the simulator, it would be, yeah, it's going to crash. Um, of course, what crash means is, is it could mean multiple things, but uh, it might do something weird, then crash, or it might just crash at the beginning. Um, yeah, so. So this is good. Uh, these questions are good <clears throat> because um, yeah, I mean, these, these questions are very good. It's very good to think about what would happen if if we do this and what would happen if we do that. Um, yeah, this is this is very good. So I'm going to remove this strike through. Okay. Any other questions? We're going to continue. We're going to continue, but we did essentially the the tough part, I think. Okay, so let's continue. Um, so we're, we did this one, which actually moves the stack pointer back to here. We jump register RA, which is, um, which is actually here. So that's another thing. So of course, if you remember when we did this one, RA becomes 148 and we haven't changed RA since after that because second function does not call another function. So this second function, it doesn't call another function. We don't have a jump and link here because of that return address is not gonna change. So when you jump register RA, it's gonna go back to here. We're gonna change T1 and it's gonna become a zero multiplied by four. And then we're gonna bring the value from the stack and put it in a zero, which is really the correct, it should be the correct value because it's the correct location. And we're going to bring the value of our A from the stack by offsetting the stack pointer by four. So that's great. And of course, the original value is 112, as we've written here. And we need to free the space. So that would move the stack pointer here. And then we need to jump register our A, which is 112. Because when we loaded our A from the stack, that gives the register our A 112. So when you jump register to 112, that's going to take you to here. We're going to do that, which is just simply an addition. We're going to put 10 in V0 and syscall, and that's going to take us back to the operating system. All right, do you have any questions before we stop the recording and start a new one and talk about returning values? Okay, I think that's great. It's great that you don't have questions. I think we covered everything. Let me stop the recording.